Hi, Danielle the Clay Lady here on the Clay Lady's campus in Nashville, Tennessee. This is the second in a series of six short videos on how to throw on the potter's wheel one step at a time. We're at step two, opening. We have our clay nice and centered and we're getting ready to use our hands to start opening it up, to start widening and make creating that vessel shape. However, before we decide to open, we have to make sure that our mound of clay is wide enough for the pot that we want to make. Your bottom of the pot, the floor of your vessel, is contained within your mound of clay. So even though you have to center in a mound, there is some shaping that can be done after centering but before opening. If I know that I'm going to make a wide bottomed piece, I'm going to center it in a mound, but then I'm going to put pressure on the top and widen it so that my floor can be contained within my mound of clay. So if I wanted to make my pot a little bit wider on the bottom, after centering, I would push a little bit more to get it wider and that way I'd be able to have a wider base that my floor of my pot would be able to fit in. So when we open, we want to make sure that our pot, or excuse me, our clay is completely centered. And when we open, we don't just take our finger and push at it because what will happen is you won't go in the middle. You see how my finger is going back and forth and back and forth? If you look at this, you'll see, just like when we were uh, off-centered in the first video that this side is a lot wider than this side. That means that this side of your pot is the wall is going to be thicker, it's going to pull up taller, it's going to stretch out farther. We need to make sure when we open, we're open exactly in the center, in the middle. So we have the clay centered and now we need to open. Instead of just taking your finger and going straight down and trying to guess where it is, let's let the clay find it for us. We're going to brace this, um, this left arm onto my leg, onto the splash pan. I'm not pushing I'm just holding to clay so that my right hand can be braced on it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to point to the middle when I point to the middle you can see how the clay moves around my finger we let the clay and the movement of the wheel find the opening find the center for us now when I'm pushing into the center I want to make sure that as soon as I hit fresh clay I get water on my fingers and I'm not still not going straight down I'm sliding in and the, your longest finger, whatever's comfortable for you, you can slowly push in. Now one thing we don't want to do as we're opening is we don't want to go all the way to the back because that means that our pot is not going to have a bottom or a floor. There's a couple way of measuring how far you've gone down. One is to take your needle tool and you push it all the way into the clay, all the way to the back. Put your finger at the uh, on top of the floor of your clay and that shows you how thick the bottom of your pot is. That's about right. If you know you're going to have a really tall foot and you want a deep foot well so that you can glaze in that space between the foot, maybe you want it to be more about three quarters of an inch or an inch. Now another trick that you can do is you can put your fingers here and then I can move them over here and you see the space right here? That's how thick the floor is. So watch this. I'm going to do this and move over here and then I can look and that's how thick the floor is. And then another way that you can tell is also just in your imagination as you're pushing down, you want to push down until you're at the top of your pinky of the outside hand. That's a little bit of guesswork, but those are three ways of making sure that the bottom is thick enough. But let's say that you've gone down, you've opened, but you went too far and you, you know that the floor of your pot's too thin. This is the trick. Back, back up and start again and you can see how I'm pushing a layer of clay down to the floor. We don't want to trap water or air in here, but I can push down, scoop in, sometimes a little nubbin will clay come up, and then that has thickened the bottom of the pot for me so I don't have to start all over again. So we're going to open. If at any time this has become uneven, now's the time to take care of that. The thinner the walls, the less you can make sure they're the same even thickness all the way around. But when the walls are this thick, you can do what's called the claw. This, the heel of the hand pushes here, your fingers push here, and you just hold. Let the movement of the wheel bring that clay around, and anything that's uh, not quite even will even right back up. And that covers opening. Now, after opening, it's time to define the floor and widen it. 
Do you find sometimes that your pots are a little bottom heavy? The next step, my next video, the third in the series of six, is going to cover defining the floor and widening, and that's going to take care of that bottom heaviness. So I hope to see you on the third video of this series, How to Throw on the Potter's Wheel One Step at a Time. If you need more information about the campus or Clay Lady products or my book for potters, the Clay Lady's Lesson Book, or maybe just sign up for our newsletter so you know what's going on. There's always educational hints and uh, also a lot of things about different tools or different happenings at the campus. You be sure and go to theclaylady.com. So thank you so much for the teaching opportunity and remember, be an artist in everything you do.